I've been asked a question lately quite a bit about testing APIs. What is necessary? Integration tests, unit tests, what is too much, what is not enough? I have some opinions. So first I wanna talk about a uh, simple project I have here. It has several APIs, some of them are controller-based and some of them are minimal API based. This is a version seven project. A lot of this would look the same in eight, but I do have some things going on here that wouldn't work with .NET 6 currently. It really comes down to what we need to actually test a project like this. Now with something like Thunder Client or Postman or my new favorite toy, which is the HTTP or .REST files, is you might think of this as some level of testing. And while I suspect they're going to add some support for running all of these in a file, this is not a great solution for testing APIs. It's a great solution for developing APIs. And, and I have that opinion because all you're doing is testing that they return data, that they don't return an error response. And there's more going on here because when you create APIs, there's some logic in there that you also need to test. Testing something as simple as get the employees might seem trivial and you could just get away with doing it by just executing the project and testing whether it turns some cars or employees or whatever you need. So here I can, you know, obviously I can go ahead and run this to just get some cars, right? Get some data and I can see that this has returned a status okay. And does that mean it succeeded? Well, in the face of it, it did, but I don't know where it's getting this data, whether the data is correct or anything. All I know is it thinks it returned some good data. So what this comes down to is actually writing tests. And there's really two types of tests that you might want to execute, unit tests and integration tests. And I talked to some people that are confused about the difference between them. So let's write some tests and talk about that. I'm also going to highlight using controllers and using minimal APIs and how testing them is a little different. So I'm going to create a new folder here called unit tests and I'm going to create a cars tests. I'm going to say cars API test in case I need some other unit tests. I'm using an X unit project here. So all I really need to do is have a fact and then a method can get cars. You'll notice right away that I don't like the snake case using the underscores to break them up, but I have worse failings than that. And so our goal here is to be able to call this controller and get this method and be able to get back what I want. So I'm gonna create a constructor because we might have more than one test that needs this. And what am I going to do? If I go ahead and create a variable called control that which we'll define in a minute and want to just say, you know, I want a new cars controller. This is this needs two pieces of information, our repository and a validator. Now we could use something like mock to mock these up and this would be the correct way. But in this simple case, I can actually just generate them. So I'll say the repo is here and I'll say the validator is here and we'll go ahead and make that available. And then I'm just going to create the validator, the validator by just creating a new vehicle validator because it's a simple construction. Well, you could also use Depends the injection here to sort of model it and there's not a big problem with that but in our case it's going to be nice and simple. So here we can start to write tests to control right. This is just a controller that I'm going to execute and get some data from and the important part of what we're doing and why it's a unit test is we are creating the controller we're executing code but none of this is going through the life cycle of a request. So this is actually just testing the code itself, not testing the entire system with the code. Those are gonna be integration tests and we will get to that. And so I'm gonna go ahead and get a result. If 
by just calling get. And there's a couple of different gets here, but I actually just want to get the full collection. And what we see as being returned here is an I result, right? Because that's how we're using this. We first have to figure out if it's a success, right? And so the way we can actually test I result is interesting. I'm going to assert that our type is assignable from OK list vehicle. So that's essentially going to that's essentially going to just make sure that this is going to be returning an OK that contains that data. Now, you may not be able to do it in this simple way. We're able to do it because of a new feature called typed results. And this typed results ends up generating a type that says the success, in our case, OK, and what it actually contains. If we're going to be getting it without using a typed result like we did here, we have to go through a couple of different steps to see that it was an OK and then to dig down and get the contents of it. So now I want to be able to get it. We've asserted this so we can assume that it is actually what we think it is. And so I'm going to get the value and I'm going to make it a little terse. I want to cast it to the list of vehicle result and then get the value out of it. You have to make sure you have the right amount of angle brackets. Now that we have the value, we can see that the value here is going to be that list of vehicles. Now we can just write some tests and we'll just make sure that we do some simple things like just not null and not empty, right? And so I consider this a unit test because we're only testing the controller itself. This repo that I'm using here is in fact a known set of data. So I'm actually using this with Bogus to build a a set amount of data that I can actually look at. And this becomes easy for me to test in a unit test because this is well known. I tend to argue against using a database for unit tests. For integration tests, we probably do want to use that. But for our unit tests, we really want it to be whatever the code is in this that we're actually testing, right? And so let's stop this. Go to my least favorite UI which is the test explorer. I could certainly run this at the command line as well, but I like to show what we see going on here. It always takes you clicking on it twice for some reason. I'm gonna cut out all that dead time. You'll notice that for some reason the build took 24 seconds and then a few more seconds for this to actually work. And so we can see the green here and see our test succeeded, all that's good. Let's talk about minimal APIs, because those can be much simpler. Actually, I'll go ahead and create the, let's see, employee API tests. I'm going to go ahead and look at that employee API I have. This is a little different. This is using a technique I've talked about, but it doesn't need to be using any of my stuff. What's important is that I'm implementing the gets and the posts and all of that and I'm pointing them at static methods. And the reason I think that's a good solution is we still get that same sort of behavior, but it also means it's really easy for us to write tests. So I'm going to just comment out the authorization because I don't want to have to I don't want to have to dig into all that for our for our example. Here I'll make it a public class. Get rid of that extra depth. And here I'll do what I did before, fact, right? Void can get employees. But here I'm not going to need any of that creation because the controller needs certain things. What I'm actually going to be able to do is say employee API, which is the name of the class that those static are on. And I'm going to create a repo here just so we can pass it in pretty easily. And then I'm just going to call, in this case, get employee. I want to get a, an employee. And because the API requires the repo as well as that ID, I can just pass it that. And let's go ahead and get employee number one. Now, what's interesting about this is you'll notice that in unit tests, we're not navigating to the URL of the object. We're actually just testing that data. And so with that result, we can do some searches assignable from 
Okay, employee result. We got that far, then we go ahead and get the value, much like we did before. Okay, employee result dot value. And I was always forgetting a full set of those curly braces, right? And now I just write some asserts. It is not not null. So we know we got something. Assert dot not empty, and I'm gonna test for the value dot first name because I want to make sure that it actually returned a first name. Assert dot not empty value dot last name. And because these could be null, I'm gonna go ahead and put a quick pound there to say I know they're not null without having to test it. And because the worst thing is it could return, it could throw an error that then shows up on our test, right? And I want, just want to make sure that the value dot commission, which is one of the values in here, is greater than zero. Not a brilliant test, not an ugly test, but pretty simple when we're using mineral APIs in the form of static methods, right? So if we come back here to test explorer, and I'll go ahead and run them all again. It's alarming how slow those tests can be when you're just making, creating them and running them over and over again. But of course, I cut out most of the Blank time for you because I care about you. So those succeeded as well, which isn't surprising since I knew what I was going to write here. Let's talk about integration tests. Now I'm going to create a integration tests slash cars integration tests. And you probably hate to see me do all these fixed ups again, but it'll be worth it. Because we want what we want to do here is a little different. We're going to start with just a fact that says public void can read cars, right? Same thing we want to test, but we want to test it as an integration. And the trick there is that we're going to need a package. So I'm just going to open up the console. I have to always have to remember to save all because Sometimes this can go awry. Dot net add package. And in the folder for the test, let's go ahead and add this Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC, which I think is a little oddly named there, but testing. Because the way this works, it doesn't care whether it's controller based, MVC based, or minimal APIs. In fact, it can be used to can test Razor views, can uh, test. Um, controllers with views. So you can get quite a lot working with this. But how does this work? We're going to first need a constructor because what I want it to be able to pass to me is a web application, oops, web application factory for program. Now this program is where? It's over here in program.cs, right? And I'm listing it as the name program. And that's what happens with top level statements. So the reason why I'm able to do that is this magic little line, which you may have run into before of saying, you know what, make this class, which is normally internal, make it public so that I can use it in some way. So by giving us a factory here, is I'm just gonna go ahead and create a field for the factory so that we can then just use the factory to create a client. So factory create client. And this is going to create a client for the web server that is defined in program. Now this isn't actually running the request through HTTP, but it is mimicking it. And the idea here is we should be able to say result equals client dot get async and give it API cars, right? This way we can test how this works through our entire set of through our entire set of services that are required and the different middleware and the authorization middleware and all of that stuff, routing, et cetera. That's why this is an integration test is we're telling it to use the entire system to execute this request. We're not saying this request is in a controller. We're not saying this request is in a minimal API. We're saying this URL should be doing something. And because it's, async we're going to need to say away and let's go ahead and change this to async task 
We're just going to assert that it's not null, the result. What you're getting here is result dot status code. So we could assert true. Let me move this a little up so we can see it a little better. Result dot status code equals OK. Right? We can just make sure that we actually got a 200. And then let's get our content out of that request, of that result. Content, and then I'm going to read, because it's normally a string, I'm going to read, read as string async, which of course, I'm going to need to await that. I'm going to assert that that's not empty either, the content that we created. Because the content we're getting here is just going to be a string, and we want to make sure the string isn't empty. And then we're going to need to actually get it back out, right? So I'm going to say cars equals JSON serializer dot deserialize into vehicles, right? Into an I enumerable. And now we just have objects. So we can say assert not null cars, assert not empty cars. And finally, I'll just say assert true, which I'm just going to say cars where C equals C dot ID equals one. So we'll have a, we'll get a car back with a ID of one. Now this is going to run this whole thing and we're going to be passed in this factory. But one of the interesting things here is we could run this and it'll work, but we also might want to use the X unit I class fixture. And what does that class fixture contain? It contains this. So what does that mean? What does the class fixture do? It makes sure that we get a new one of these every time. This is basically telling the test framework to create a new one of these for every fact we're going to test. So this ends up having the same state every time. And if I build that pretty quick, let's go over to Test Explorer and see whether it's found some new tests. There's our can read cars and let's go ahead and execute them. Those succeeded as well. And so ultimately, and so ultimately I want you to take away from this the idea that unit testing APIs is something you can do, maybe should do. Now, depending on the size of your organization or the amount of resources you have, testing each method on each API for unit tests and in integration tests probably is overkill. As you know, if you've been watching these, I'm pretty opposed to trying to get to 100% code coverage. So I would take the most problematic or the most complex of these and write unit tests for and maybe integration tests for. Because in both of those cases, you're going to get what I got here, which is all green, right? It succeeded because I wrote the code and I wrote the test. The value here is in six months when some other assumption that we use in our code causes this to fail. So that even though it looked like an innocent change in this small piece, that by using it in our API, that it's causing a failure for some unknown reason. And that's just to allow us to catch those bugs earlier instead of later. Uh, debugging the logs of your system a lot harder than when the unit test, when you check this stuff in, fails, right? Earlier bugs are easier to fix. Well, thanks for joining me. I'm going to be in Kansas City for KCDC this week. So if you're there, come say hi. I'm doing some pivoting right now. So we're taking on more project work. We used to just be doing training. So if you need some help, please reach out. I'm happy to help. And sometimes I can't help, but I can point you at the right person. This has been Sean Wilderman for Coding Shorts. See you next time.